What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the basic overview of all the key things to look out for for the mid-season update, as well as some key updates that they added for the Cyber Showdown, like different aesthetics, store items, and different unlockables that you can get while playing. Before we jump in, if you like these news update type of videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. So firstly, when I look at the Cyber Showdown event, I really felt as if they added a lot of cool content for this game, mainly because of the fact that they actually landed this very well the first time they had the Cyber Showdown, because I'm such a fan of Cyberpunk and the similar type of aesthetic. I've always been a fan of this event returning. A lot of it has to do with bright colors, a lot of different mix and matches of different color schemes and sets that are available. And they do have a lot of interesting unlockables when it comes to the free pass that it's there. I think when I look at the overall pass itself, the fact that you're getting not only different color schemes for your weapons with the plum fire color scheme that is kind of a mix of a blue and purplish violet color with a nice collection of charms to add with like the aesthetic Halo VHS and arcade game. But my most enjoyed or the fact that they are adding this gets me the most happy are some new models for your weapons. And I mentioned this in the previous video, how excited I was that we're going to start getting different models for our guns, because this actually brings a whole new era of customizations for our guns where they can now start to create a lot more lore behind the different variants, as well as even bring back some old kind of textures or styles from previous games that if we want to basically unlock them and use them for our own kind of customization for our Spartan, that would be a really cool function to add. And along with that, the store items, as much as they are overpriced, they actually do have some really cool combinations. I feel like the color schemes they added for them, the different armor pieces and emblems are all pretty damn cool. But the point is that these are available for you roughly hitting around that 13 to 18 dollar range i feel like they should always lower the price to make it really in regards to that 10 dollar season pass it should always be below that because if you're getting a season pass for 100 items and then a bundle only has roughly what 20 items this should not match that same price range so i feel like they do have some cool things unlock but they should definitely lower the price for the store items and when it comes to the mid-season update i had a whole video on the preview up leading up to this update but I do want to jump into all the key additions that were added here so we can kind of see the positives and negatives. So firstly, Halo support had dropped a nice little tweet or post or whatever the hell Elon Musk wants us to call these things nowadays, giving a nice little review of everything that you should expect or be seeing in this update, as well as the fact that we are getting an official Waypoint article that talks in detail a lot of the things that have been added. So we're going to jump right into it. And the first thing I want to talk about is the new map Dredge. And Dredge is a remake make of the Halo Reach map countdown, which I really adored. I think this is one of my favorite maps from Halo Reach. I had a lot of fun playing it back in the day. I think it's one of the best maps for Infection or just Team Slayer in general. So when I heard about this map being remade and brought into Halo Infinite, I was ecstatic. So when I played Dredge for the first time, I felt like this was a very interesting iteration of that countdown. And I really think that they did a pretty good job at kind of bringing in a lot of the similar characteristics of countdown, but also making some adjustments that make it feel different. It doesn't seem like it's a one for one remake like we saw with the squad battle playlist. This seems like a very different iteration, has its own kind of way of how you would play it. Also, a lot of kind of adjustments to make it so that it actually helps with not getting caught by your enemy team or just having some updated areas so that it feels a lot more kind of difficult to just dominate the map. Now, a lot of the key features are still there. Like as you see on the map, they have the bridge that has the power weapon, which is most likely going to be the spanker rockets. But then the other side has the outside area, very similar to Countdown, but it's really organized differently. That instead of you getting there by a lift on the bottom floor, you actually get there by teleporter and it does have the sniper rifle outside side versus it used to be more of a, like a grenade or one of those different weapons but now it's more of a sniper rifle or an accurate style weapon which is going to be a little bit different when playing this in a possible rank scenario i played this game mode in all different modes that they have so in team slayer king of the hill capture the flag and oddball and i really felt like this was a pretty damn good way to play all four different game modes i felt like the best ones were king of the hill or team slayer because of the fact that it just felt smooth it felt like it's a really good map to kind of move around and it just was really well organized. It was not too mishmash. It was not over 
overwhelmingly compacted either. And I like the fact that they added a lot of sneaky areas or passageways to help you avoid getting locked down by an enemy team. I like this iteration of Countdown. I would probably put it in my top five maps of Infinite right now, especially for the arena playlist. So I'm really excited to see how this map kind of plays in ranked, but I think it's going to be a really fun time. So far, I really think this is a great map. But one of the key things this update has done is actually include a lot of fixes to bugs or just address a lot of things that Halo fans wanted. So obviously I talked about this in a previous video, but death cam improvements, I feel like a lot of people kind of took this for granted. This was something that was in all the Halo games before. It actually helps for strategic purposes and it used to be locked to only show the front of what your teammate sees. But now the fact that we actually get to move around and kind of see the surroundings actually helps us strategically when playing ranked game modes or just playing in general. But a lot of the other updates, I felt like the biggest thing was Forge. I feel like Forge had a lot of cool things that were adjusted here. The fact that we're getting that reactive war, and I mentioned this in the previous video, that basically the water up to this point when you use it in Forge was static, where instead of you actually being able to shoot and you see any reactions like it would in a real life scenario or in a lot of the kind of dev made maps that we see already, it was basically where you could shoot right through it and nothing would happen. But now with this update, it allows you to create maps that actually do react to movement, do react to vehicles and weapons and grenades and things like that. So I think this is a great thing for Forgers to be able to add this to their own current maps or to the maps like in the squad battle playlist that that are basically now becoming more realistic or closer to dev made maps, which is always a positive for me. And the fact that they're actually going to be fixing a lot of like the organization of Forge, meaning that people who are really on a daily grind of Forge have always been bugged by little issues like being able to like condense menus or things like that. It actually makes a lot more user friendly, meaning that people who aren't really Forge freaks can kind of jump into it for the first time and really enjoy it. And now those Forgers that have been making all these maps have really been dealing with these issues from the very beginning so they're probably ecstatic with these updates and I think this is a really good thing to see. One of the key things I noticed that 343 did in this update was basically fix a lot of the bugs or minor issues that fans have been really asking for them to fix for a long time and probably the biggest thing I noticed right away was the fact that we're going to finally get normal Pelican drops in Big Team Battle and I played a lot of Big Team Battle matches in my entire span of time in Halo and it's my, probably my favorite playlist to play overall so seeing this update fixed is just a great where I played Big Team Battle matches and basically there would be times where one team gets a tank and one team gets a Warthog and whichever team gets the tank is going to be the most dominant one for that round and I feel like this just breaks the balanced gameplay that we see and I feel like this update now fixes that problem and every single game I played in Big D Battle since the update dropped has been consistently normal it has not been a problem They've all been exactly the way they're supposed to be played. And I feel like this is a good thing. We finally were able to break the code, fix the problem, and I'm just happy to see it. But the fact that we're also getting a lot of adjustments in just the campaign or just customizations where like your charms would actually stick to your weapon. Like before, sometimes they would just randomly fall off and they'd just be floating there. These little adjustments that make the game feel a lot more cleaner, a lot more efficient. And it just feels like it, it just fixed that sloppy feeling that sometimes you think about three for three and you're like, how the hell is this happening? in the year 2023 with game development like they finally fixed some of these little issues that people have been asking them to do for a long time and they give you a long list of things i mean there's like 50 plus bugs that were fixed and it, you got to give credit three for three they were doing a bug fixing spree when it comes to a lot of the problems that they had and you can say yeah they also were the cause of these problems for sure but they also are fixing them but the fact that they're mentioning that there are a list of known issues that yes they're they may not have fixed everything but they have a list of things that are still being in the process of fixing or they even gave updates on things that are still a problem. Apparently a lot, according to the update, you can now have a lot more cleaner FPS when you're playing on PC. I've seen a lot of times people have had some issues when it comes to keeping a consistent FPS rating on their PCs versus on console. It was a lot more efficient. So uh, this update does address that issue. But one of the biggest updates that I saw right away that got me extremely happy to hear was the fact that Guad Battle is now an official staple playlist within Halo Infinite, meaning that it's not going to be rotated out. 
it was in discussion of rotating it out completely but because of the the constant fan support of the mode it's now becoming one of the key featured modes within infinite and i'm just so happy to finally say that this is here to stay because of the fact that i played so much of this game mode i felt like it was the, probably the best game mode to play of all infinite at the moment bringing back those halo 3 style maps i feel like this was just such a good move on 343's part they recognize that this is a great playlist let's keep adding to it let's keep it around and P fans are all happy to hear that i'm happy to hear that and i think this is a good thing to see from 343 three. but overall when i'm thinking about this update and what it does do for infinite at the current state i think it does a lot of things that people have been complaining about for a while it adds that seasonality that people including 343 three, have said that they failed to do and I think that three for three needs a lot of dubs. And this is an example of what you should be doing as a modern FPS developer, adding updates, fixing problems that you currently have. And they've been doing this for the past few up since the winter update, they have been heading dubs. They've been doing a very good job at adding new content. That's fun to play, adding fixes that people have been complaining about for a while and getting people excited to jump back into Halo Infinite. I mean, I've been saying this for many videos now that Infinite has been hitting that momentum in stride, being more consistent and positive with these updates, making people feel a lot more happier to play the game and feeling a lot more positive in their outlook for the game or just for 3 for 3 in general. I've seen comments on multiple different videos of people being happy to jump back in the infinite again, and I'm not alone. I know that content creators like Kevin Collects, Mint Blitz, Foot Ghost, have all been on that same boat as me and I've talked with them before and I've shown my interest in playing this game on a daily basis. I play this game all the time. So I've seen this game at its launch point to now and they are completely different in how they are played and how they feel. And I'm just happy to see that Halo is now kind of hitting that stride in the right direction. And when I'm looking at this game for the future, the rest of season four, if they continue adding updates like these, giving us new maps to play, some new adjustments, I think season four was a major success for Halo Infinite. But even going forward for season five and six, based on all the leaks of the things that we've seen, like with weapons or equipment or vehicles and maps, I feel like Halo Infinite has a lot of content left in the tank. And I kind of want to use that meme, well, hold up, let them cook, because right now three for three is baking some Something. They're, they're cooking something there that's making this game a lot more fun to play. And I'm excited to see what they have in store for us in the future. But what do you think about the mid-season update? Are you happy about the adjustments they made? Are you excited to play the new map Dredge? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like these type of videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.